Hi again, and my radar meteorologist Matt Capucci. At least one person is dead and several injured following a voracious tornado that carved through Metro New Orleans on Tuesday night. 12,000 customers lost power during the storm, which brought destruction to several neighborhoods in the Lower Ninth Ward. The tornado hit shortly after 7.15 p.m. Initially, a tornado warning had been issued for a cell at 7 p.m. south of New Orleans, but that cell intensified as it approached the Big Easy. The tornado warning was extended into the metro at 7.19 p.m., the tornado hitting moments later. First off, what made this big tornado? A disastrous combination of ingredients that struck a pernicious balance. For starters, New Orleans is right on the water in the Gulf of Mexico. With cold air aloft, we had a highly unstable air mass as the warm surface compared with high altitude chill. That meant pockets of rising air. Before the tornado, most storms had organized into a line, which tends to have a lesser tornado risk. Around 6.30 p.m., however, a couple thunderstorms formed on the southern end of the line. In the storm chasing world, we call these ones Tail End Charlie. The southernmost cell in a line tends to be the most problematic because it has uninterrupted warm inflow from the south. That can help a storm quickly overachieve. At the same time, look at this dip in the jet stream and notice how fast the winds were going. That was integral to the storms. On satellite, we see robust wind shear or a change of wind speed and or direction with height. Notice the south-southeasterly low-level winds feeding into the storms. Then we have winds at the middle levels out of the south-southwest and the southwest at the upper levels. That got this storm spinning like a top. The National Weather Service spent much of Tuesday night and early Wednesday surveying the damage, which may wind up being in the EF3 range. Unfortunately, the tornado passed through a highly populous part of New Orleans. Around 7.22 p.m., it was in the Timberlane area near Redwood Drive, just east of Martin Luther King Jr. Park. At 7.24, it was in Gretna, with the telltale donut hole appearing on radar. That's a sign that the tornado's updraft is so strong that it's suspending rain and preventing it from falling. The tornado was spotted by a National Weather Service employee at 7.25 p.m. At 7.26, it passed over Terrytown near Oakwood Center Shopping Mall. Over the next few minutes, its path tore along areas near Shirley Drive and Berman Memorial Park. Then it crossed the Mississippi River at 729, narrowly missing a cruise ship before hitting Arabi in the Lower Ninth Ward. There was a debris ball on radar over West Jackson Drive at 732 p.m., a sign of pieces of buildings and vegetation being carried into storm clouds. The radar sees those, bounces off it, and plots it. The tornado probably lifted sometime between 735 and 740. It's not the first time a destructive tornado has hit New Orleans. In fact, they got an EF3 tornado on February 7, 2017. It brought moderate to severe damage to 638 homes, forcing half to be condemned. 33 people were injured. Tuesday night's episode is a good reminder that tornadoes can and do hit big cities. There's nothing special, no magic force field repelling them or protecting you. So let's go over some cities that have been impacted before. Nashville got struck by an EF3 tornado on the night of March 3rd, 2020. Five people died from the tornado, which destroyed most of the John C. Toon International Airport. St. Louis also got a direct hit from a tornado, which also struck the airport. It came on April 22nd, 2011, tracking 22 miles through the metro. Remarkably, nobody died in the F4 beast. St. Louis has a dark history with tornadoes, having been hit by a hellacious twister on May 27th, 1896 that claimed more than 250 lives. Now, 2011 was a downright terrible year for tornadoes. Downtown Raleigh, North Carolina was hit by a weakening EF3 tornado on April 16th, which prompted an extremely rare tornado emergency for the city. Just a couple weeks later, during the super outbreak of April 27, 2011, Birmingham and Tuscaloosa both saw an EF4 or EF5 hit within the city or extremely close. Joplin, Missouri saw the deadliest tornado in nearly 60 years on May 22nd, with 161 people killed. The St. John's Regional Medical Center was shifted off its foundation by the EF5 tornado. Then, barely a week and a half tornado, disaster struck again. The heart of Springfield, Massachusetts was hit by an EF3 tornado that killed four people along its 39-mile path. And that's in Massachusetts! Yes, Massachusetts! Even cities in the Northeast can get hit. Worcester, Massachusetts got hit by an F5 tornado on June 9, 1953, which killed a total of 94 people. Many people called 2011 the year of the Metronado. Another major Metronado occurred in 2013. Moore, Oklahoma sustained a direct hit by an EFI for the second time in 15 years. 24 people were killed by this twister. 
Moore is a suburb on the south side of Oklahoma City. Here you see three of the major tornadoes that have hit the beleaguered city in the past two decades. More recently, we also had a tornado hit Dallas, Texas on October 20th, 2019. It was more than a half mile wide and caused one and a half billion dollars in damage. Fortunately, no one was killed. Dayton, Ohio, similar story. An EF4 tornado hit the northern suburbs of Dayton on May 27, 2019. One person died and half a billion dollars in damage resulted. In the past 25 years, tons of other big name cities have been hit. Atlanta and New York City both got brief twisters in 2008. Orlando, Miami, Minneapolis, Mobile, Alabama, Houston, Huntsville, all over the place. Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, has had multiple tornadoes walk right up the National Mall, including one on July 1st last year. That was my first day on the job as a local TV meteorologist, and I can tell you, it was certainly a memorable evening. Even Salt Lake City, Utah, got a tornado downtown in 1999. So to reiterate, if you live in a city, you're not special. There's no magic force field. I hate to break it to you. Tornado risk is a part of your life too. You need to know what to do when a warning is issued, even if it's the middle of the night. Amid what's already been an active start to severe weather season, remember, proper planning may just save your life. I'm my radar meteorologist, Matt Capucci. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.